in a lonely potter's field here in Owensboro, Kentucky at the Rose Hill Elmwood Cemetery holds the final remains of upwards of 1,000 forgotten individuals. From this location, we tell the story of Rainy Bethia, a man who was charged, convicted, and executed for one of the most horrific murders in Owensboro history. Today, we will take a look at that and how that execution led to the ending of not only public executions in the state of Kentucky, but public executions in the United States of America. According to the marker placed from 1873 through 2000, Potter's Field was the final resting place for gamblers down on their luck, average citizens without money for graves, and others who died far from home with no one to claim them. No one is sure how many men, women, and children are buried here. It is believed they number nearly 1,000. Today's cemetery tour takes us to Davies County, Owensboro, Kentucky at the Rose Hill Elmwood Cemetery. Rainy Bethia was born October 16, 1909 in Roanoke County, Virginia. He was the last person publicly executed in the United States. A heinous crime, a media frenzy, a botched execution proceeding, all surrounding this story led to the end of public execution in the United States. Bethia arrived in Owensboro in 1933. He was orphaned after the death of his mother and later his father. He would find work as a laborer living in the basement of a family that he worked for. He first faced legal troubles when he was charged with breaching the peace. He was caught stealing two purses and since the value exceeded $25, he was convicted of a felony and was sentenced to one year in the Kentucky State Penitentiary. He was paroled around six months later and returned to Owensboro. On June 7, 1936, Bethia entered the home of Leisha Edwards. Using the roof of an outbuilding next door, he made his way into Edwards' bedroom. He removed the screen from her window, made his way to her, violently choked and abused her. After rendering her unconscious, he stole several valuables and rings. While doing this, he removed his black celluloid prison ring and forgot to retrieve it. The violent crime scene was discovered the next day when the Smith family living downstairs became concerned that they had not heard Edwards make any noise that morning. A neighbor was contacted by the family and he made the gruesome discovery. The Smiths contacted a doctor who then summoned coroner Delbert Glenn. The police were also alerted. Muddy footprints invaded an otherwise clean and tidy room. Coroner Glenn found the celluloid prison ring. It did not take long for police to pinpoint the suspect as several witnesses stated that they had seen Bethia wearing the ring. A then new system of fingerprinting allowed investigators to determine Bethia was in the room which started a four day manhunt. He eluded police several different times but was finally arrested and identified by a scar on the left side of his head. Bethia was ordered by Judge Forrest Roby to be transported to Louisville to the Jefferson County Jail. In the course of the next several days, Bethia made three different confessions to his crime. In the state of Kentucky, executions for murder and robbery were carried out by electrocution, while charges of rape could still be punished by public hanging. The prosecution elected to charge the latter charge. He was found guilty, setting up what would be one of the biggest debacles in Owensboro history. Although the crime was well known locally, it gained national attention because the sheriff of Davies County was a woman. Florence Shoemaker Thompson became sheriff after her husband, Sheriff Everett Thompson, unexpectedly passed away. Arthur Hash, a former Louisville police officer, volunteered to perform the execution. Along with professional hangman Phil Hanna, they would perform the execution. It is said that 20,000 people gathered to watch the hanging. Hash, the presiding officer, arrived terribly intoxicated, wearing a white suit and a white Panama hat. Leaving the Davies County Jail at 5.21 a.m., Bethia walked with two deputies to the scaffold. 
He climbed the steps and stood on the X as instructed. Bathia made his final confession to a local priest and an officer placed a black hood over his face. He was bound by his ankles, thighs, arms, and chest. Hannah placed the noose and instructed former officer Hash to pull the lever. Hash, who was intoxicated, did nothing. Hannah then shouted, do it. Finally, a deputy performed the task as Hash was too intoxicated to complete it. He fell eight feet and his neck was instantly broken. Bethia was pronounced dead. He had wished his body to be sent to his sister in South Carolina, but that request was denied. He was buried here in this pauper's grave at Rose Hill Elmwood Cemetery. Now Hannah complained that Hash should have never been able to perform the execution in his drunken state. This botched execution and embarrassment led to the end of not only public executions in Kentucky, but in the United States as well. And while I was here and visiting the grave and telling this horrific story, I began wondering the victim, where was the victim buried at? Much to my surprise, she is buried in this exact same cemetery. So now we are actually going to go just across the way to visit her final resting place. And once I found out that Alicia Edwards was actually buried in this same cemetery, I had to come visit and I wanted to share that with you all. And I just want to take a few moments to discuss a few thoughts here. I mean, this poor woman is kind of forgotten in the aftermath because this, and I, I would encourage everyone to go research this and, and read some of the articles from the day about this. You can find those online. It is unbelievable what a spectacle this was. It's, it was said that People came, vendors came to sell drinks and people were trying to get souvenirs and uh, just a, a perfect storm of disaster happened and it was so embarrassing, the raucous crowd and uh, just how that played out that the Kentucky State Legislature uh, basically said that's enough and it turned out to be the last public execution because it was such an embarrassment to the state. So I feel like that Alicia Edwards kind of gets forgotten in the mix of such a public PR disaster really so I want to pay my respects to her and uh, here today she was a 70 year old woman uh, and she was found around 11 a.m. on Sunday June 7th 1936 uh, that's when she was found um, so wanted to pay our respects and show you her grave but yeah this and from what I've read newspapers took great liberties in reporting the event talking about how the crowd was unruly and how they had an appetite for this type of this type of situation and it's like I said just a major embarrassment to um, to the state of Kentucky so much to the point that yeah this type of a scene was was eventually outlawed but I want to thank you all for joining me today in Rose Hill Elmwood Cemetery in Owensboro Kentucky to look at this very odd tragic and sad story and also pay our respects to miss alicia edwards thank you all for watching i am going to leave links in the description where you can find me uh, facebook instagram merchandise i would love to hear from you please join me there and again thank you all so much from owensboro kentucky i will see you again soon